Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. Today we'll be talking about the very last thing about the chapter one. As promised, we'll be looking into the sample papers or sample questions about uh, the chapter one. So as of now, we have covered almost everything about uh, the chapter one. So let's quickly look into some of the sample questions, which would basically give you an idea that how exactly the questions appear in the Isaac QB examination. So let's quickly look into uh, the very first question of the syllabus uh, where we're talking about the chapter one. And here uh, we basically see a common pattern about uh, which of the four, like, you know, which of the questions which appear from the same topic and what what is the language which is used, the pattern, what they basically describe about, and also like how we can understand and differentiate the questions easily. So most of the tips and tricks would come right from here when we talk about the sample questions on chapter one and following each chapter uh, what we cover. So beyond that, obviously at the end of this entire session, that's the entire series, I'll be giving you a lot of other uh, inputs which would definitely help you to explore more about the certification uh, examination. So let's quickly get started with it. And we have got the very first question here, like from the first chapter, uh, which of the following statements best describes one of the seven key principles of software testing? So here they're trying to ask you a question about the principles of testing which we have covered in the uh, third tutorial. So let's see what we have got answers as, like automated test avoid exhaustive testing better than manual test, where the option A is, uh, you know, something which says that automated tests can avoid exhaustive testing better than manual test, but I don't think we have any such statement about it. With sufficient effort and tool support, exhaustive testing is feasible for all softwares, Whereas C says it is normally impossible to test all input and output combination for a software system. And the option D says the purpose of testing is to demonstrate the absence of defect. So if you see here, basically we have got the right answer as C, where uh, that's the only one which speaks about one of the principles, which is exhaustive testing. So exhaustive testing says that it is normally impossible to test all input or output combination for a software system. Whereas if we talk about D, the purpose of testing is to demonstrate absence of defect. No, we have one of the principles again, where it says testing shows presence of defects. So that's against the same thing. So, and when we talk about B, with sufficient effort and tool support, exhaustive testing is feasible for all softwares, where we do not recommend conducting exhaustive testing as we know about it already. Exhaustive testing is all about trying with all possible combinations, which is quite unrealistic. So by the time you know the content, it becomes quite simple and easy for you to quickly look into the answers and also understand that why these other options would not be correct. So a common tip here to make you understand and remember that uh, you need to get the right answer. Plus, you need to make yourself more confident about the right answer. To do that, you can cross-check the other options that why they should not be right for this particular scenario. So based on that, you will be very much sure or doubly sure on the uh, right option what you have selected. So let's look in the second one. Which of the following statement is the most valid goal for a test team? So here A option says that to determine whether enough component tests were executed within the system testing. B to detect as many failures as possible so that de defects can be identified and corrected. Whereas C, to prove that all defects are identified. D, to prove that any remaining defect will not cause any failures. So now if you see uh, the right answer is B, where A says to determine whether enough component tests, which is unit testing, were executed within system tests. And now if we understand, we are basically having these two levels all different than each other. So I cannot execute basically a component test in the system level, whereas I cannot execute a system test in component level. So this has a quite a irrelevancy related to the objective of tests, testing. Whereas uh, when you talk about C, it says to prove that all defects are identified, team at any point of time, no matter you would have got hundreds of defects, you cannot make an statement that there are no more defects or any such thing like, you know, you have found all the defects. Because if you go on testing, obviously you would find maybe more. So until unless you test them, you cannot declare such statement that you have all defects. And that is not one of the objective. We have only four objectives for testing. 
that is one to prevent defect second is to find defect third provide information for decision making and fourth that is your confidence so this is not one of that whereas to prove uh, option d to prove that any remaining defect will not cause any failures first of all looking at option c you know that now you cannot make a statement that there are any remaining effects or not plus when you don't know about the defect you can obviously make cannot make such statement that whether they will cause any failures or not because you never know if the defect would do that because until unless you interact with it then only you can make a statement so finally the right answer is b the next question here which of these tasks would you expect to be performed during the test analysis and design phase of the fundamental test process so we have got five stages like five phases of uh, fundamental test process where we know about uh, the test planning and control test analysis and design test implementation and execution evaluating exit criteria and reporting whereas the last stage is the test closure activity so we are asking here about the second phase of fundamental test process that's test analysis and design where the right answer is it's b so when you talk about uh, the obviously the fundamental test process we start with the test planning where we do defining the test objectives so the option a is an activity which is commonly performed at uh, the very first phase of uh, fundamental test process that's test planning and control whereas reviewing the test basis as we have already learnt about it is the test analysis and design activity whereas creating test suites uh, from the test procedure is a part of uh, the very much you know test implementation and execution and analyzing lessons learned for process improvement that's a part of test closure activities so i think that's a quick and straightforward from the syllabus what we have discussed and also you know to the point so i think everything is quite clear when we talk about such things let's look into the next question uh, below is a less list of problems that can be observed during testing or in production which of these problem is a failure so we again know about these terms uh, from the chapter 1 that what is a fault what is failure defect and so on so they are talking about the same thing and also they have specified here that during testing or in production where obviously it must be visible to a tester not to anybody else so when they say during testing it's obviously it is visible to a tester not to anybody else in the uh, different teams so when you look at the answer sets we have got a the product crashed when the user selected an option in a dialog box whereas b one source code file included in the build has the wrong version c the computation algorithm used wrong input variable and d the developer misinterpreted the requirement for the algorithm now if we concentrate here obviously the option b c and d all three is visible to a developer or anyone who knows about the structure of the code or maybe the back end understanding of the code and when we have understood about the terms testing and debugging so one of the tutorial i was talking about testing and debugging differences between them so testing is a process where you just conduct executions and uh, uh, run your test cases and if your test cases fails you call it as a failure but it does not deal with any such thing where you uh, get started with debugging because debugging is a role of developer where developer deals with the understanding of how to find out the root cause and these b c d are the three options where it is related to the root cause analysis which is only happen once the defect has been reported so altogether the right answer is a the product crashed when the user selected an option in a dialog box which is visible to a tester during the testing or in production so if you see it's quite simple to uh, answer this question subject to you understand the question carefully the reason is this is how they try to uh, twist the question so that they complicate you because foundation level is a quite simple examination but at a certain point of time they just try to trick you around to make it more complicated but as you see now as you understand obviously it's easy and simple to follow the next question is which of the following attitudes qualification or actions would lead to problems or maybe conflict within mixed teams of tester and developers when observed in reviews and test 
Team review is an activity where uh, you know different stakeholders gather together to review a particular document, and we also call it as static testing, which we'll be covering in chapter three. But based on the standards of ISTQB, they can use terms from any chapter to any chapter. So it's not that this question belongs to chapter three or something. Now this question will be asked to you on the successful completion of the entire syllabus. So they can use any term from any chapter. So it's not that this is not a relevant question for this chapter. It is relevant because they are asking you the question from the psychology of testing. But they can use terms from anywhere across the syllabus. So that's the reason we have reviews here. But the concentration is what kind of you know attitudes, qualification, or action can cause problems when experiencing independent testing team. So let's look at the options here. Testers and developers are curious and focused on finding defects. Absolutely, that would help gain the quality in the system and would be a joint effort to work on it and definitely cannot conduct conflict kind of concept. Uh, testers and developers are sufficiently qualified to find failures and defects. That's also positive. C. Testers and developers communicate defects as criticism of people, not as criticism of the software product. And that sounds something negative because you are trying to point out somebody on personal window compared to the application, whereas we learned in psychology of testing that it must be neutral, fact-focused, and should be criticized about the product, not the people. Whereas anyways, though you get your right answer, it's a good practice to read all the options because you never know the last option may be having more relevant answer. So let's look at D. Testers expect that there might be defects in the software product, which the developers have not found and fixed. So first of all, if testers expect that, it's up to them. It's on a personal window which they are keeping within them and it has not been reported to anyone else. So subject that they mention that it is being reported as a part of it, this is just an intuition, it's a personal perception which can be kept within you and you can keep on thinking about it. But unless, until unless it is reported to a management and management takes necessary actions, then it can be causing conflict or problems within the team. But these answers are quite relevant as of now, whereas C is more relevant compared to D. So the final answer is C for this particular question. Let's look into the next one. Which of the following statements are true? A. Software testing may be required to meet legal or contractual requirements. That's from the consideration of acceptance testing. Acceptance testing deals with meeting the legal as well as the contractual requirements, which is a part of the client business requirements. B. Software testing is mainly needed to improve the quality of the product released by the developers. Team, when we say released by the developers, obviously uh, the very first release which happens within the project is from the developers. And officially we call it as an internal release where one team of uh, members is trying to release the product to another team that is between development team and the testing team and then the major release or external release is what you do post testing to the market or maybe to the client so that's so option b is also right whereas when you look at option c rigorous testing and fixing of found defects could help reduce the risk of problems occurring in an operational environment now here we talk about rigorous testing is one of the way where you can work extensively on the application to a certain extent, like working with exploratory testing and so on. And fixing of found defects could help reduce the risk. Obviously, that's one of the good approach to help find reduce, uh, reduce the risk and also to fix it. Whereas when you look at D, rigorous testing is sometimes used to prove that all failures have been found. Now remember team, None of the principle speaks about that, whereas it says that there are no such ways where by which you can conduct a certain level or certain type of testing which can help you to find all failures. At any point of time, we still say the principle one, that testing shows presence of defect but does not prove that there are no more defects. So D is absolutely wrong and we have the most relevant option here as A where A, B, C are true and D is false. So the right answer is A and obviously now you can understand based on the explanation why B, C, D is not correct. Let's look into the next question here and uh, which is from the question debugging and testing as a difference. 
So which of the following statements correctly describes the difference between testing and debugging? So obviously we have discussed this in the very first tutorial of this chapter that what's the differentiation between the testing and debugging and obviously just now we looked at another question about the same thing. So let's look at the options now. We have got A as testing identifies the source of defect whereas source is about root cause analysis. Debugging analyzes the faults and proposes the prevention activities. That's not up to the mark what we are looking at. B. Dynamic testing shows failures caused by defects. Okay. Debugging finds, analyzes and removes the causes of failure in the software. So if you remember what we have discussed in the chapter 1, uh, the very first tutorial about testing and debugging, obviously B sounds to be absolutely fine with that. We are Testing deals only with finding the defects, whereas debugging deals with understanding it, analyzing it, doing the root cause, and obviously fixing that. So, based on our understanding of the definitions and the uh, you know meaning behind that, we are having most relevant as of now is B. Let's look at C. Testing removes faults. Debugging identifies the cause of failures. No, testing doesn't help you to remove faults. Whereas D says... Dynamic testing prevents the causes of failures and debugging removes the failures. So now that's also, uh, you know, good to a certain extent. But when you say uh, dynamic testing prevents the causes of failure, uh, yeah, to some extent by conducting reviews, you can say, but uh, debugging removes the failures now. Debugging removes the defects not the failures. Failure, as we know about the term now, it is basically an approach of finding defects by conducting execution, executing a test case, and if your test case fails, you call it as a failure. Whereas, you know, when you talk about the dynamic testing, it's about finding the defects, whereas debugging is not about removing failures, it's about fixing the defects, or removing the defects, or maybe fault. So, D is a little irrelevant compared to any other option. So anyways, the right answer now what we have got is B here. So team, this is this is certain set of questions what we have got. I'll be sending a lot of other questions with you uh, at the end of the tutorial. So stay tuned for more updates on the uh, sample questions and practice sets, the mock examinations and all which you can take up for your preparation. Beyond that, you can still comment and uh, put across your clarifications about these questions or maybe about the chapter one. The next tutorial will be talking about the chapter 2. We'll be getting started with it soon. And beyond that, you are free to still comment and uh, definitely share your own perception about the right answers or maybe a justification required for the option which are not correct. So, hope you have enjoyed this video and definitely uh, learned something new today. Maybe you can just comment more about anything if you are looking for. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe it right away. And... Uh, click on the bell icon for more updates on your mail id whereas stay tuned for the upcoming videos and tutorials on the chapter 2 take care till then happy learning